Okay, so we've done the discrete values of k. So where might you have that? You'll have that when your wave function itself is repeating, and I'm saying wave function, but again, this doesn't have to be quantum mechanical. So if it's a repeating pattern um, of 2L is what we said that was, or you might actually get that if it's in a well such that you have boundary conditions that constrain what your values of k can be. So this is what we, we just did, the discrete values. So we say we build our function out of a sum of all of our possible e to the i k x's, where they each have their own coefficient. Now notice that this is an infinite sum, but it's still a discrete sum. Now, this is going to become an integral. k can have any value. So it's now a continuous distribution of k rather than a sum. So the sum becomes an integral, fine. Before, we could label each of our coefficients with the value of n that it corresponded to. Now, we can't. Our coefficient has to basically be a function of k. And so, notice that this is dk. It's not dx, because what we're trying to do is, instead of sum over all possible values of k, integrate over all possible values of k. That e to the i kx term is still there, so that hasn't changed. So, the other aspect is that there's a normalization term. Let's not worry about that. So what we've got done is we have taken our discrete but infinite sum, turned it into an infinite integral by basically saying the space between each possible value of k is infinitely small. So now before we had a way of calculating what that coefficient was going to be. We similarly have a way of doing that. Now before we said that our wave function repeated on a width of, basically on a period, uh, wavelength, again, space versus time, 0 to 2L. So now, it actually doesn't repeat. So we have to go from negative infinity to infinity. Because of that, our normalization coefficient changes to be 1 over square root of 2 pi. Again, don't, don't worry too much about that. Just remember that it has to be there. Now, before that negative sign popped up, and you can think of that as just as before when we were building our wave function, our general random wave function in a well out of energy eigenstates. We did the bracket of the energy eigenstate with our state, and since the energy eigenstate was in the bra, we did the complex conjugate. So you can think about it like that, that it gets a minus sign, right, because it's like the inner product, but this would be in the bra part, and then the function that we're actually trying to do the transform of then just goes into this integral. And now we're actually integrating over x. So, so my hope is that you can kind of see how we go from the discrete form into the continuous form. I think the continuous form is much harder to understand, so please first work with the discrete form, understand what this is doing. I think the simulations are a great way to do that. And then once you have this down, you can start playing a little bit more with the continuous form and it will make a lot more sense.